But enough primitives, we came here to talk about Dynamesh and Claybrush. So let's go ahead and do a quick pref preferences initialize ZBrush. And we will start again with a sphere. Drag that out on your canvas, go into edit mode. And again, you can hold down shift and snap it to your orthographic front view. Uh, hit X to go into X symmetry here. And if you kind of snap to the other view, here you go. So here's your X symmetry. And again, it's going to yell at you because I didn't, I totally forgot to hit make poly mesh 3D. It's like, okay, that's fine. Hit make poly mesh 3D. Now you can start sculpting on it. Uh, hit X again because it, when it went from an, a primitive to a make poly mesh 3D object, it lost its X symmetry. So just hit X again to go activate X symmetry here. And then we can very quickly start sculpting in. Uh, sculpting in, moving if you want to, so you go in your move brush and that's BMV for you um, or just tapping back and forth standard and move here and uh, if you're also going to notice as you're kind of working around your object it's going to kind of follow uh, the face normal of the object, so, so you see my cursor is kind of flipping and flopping around. I don't mind that when I'm doing box modeling stuff and very simple things, but as I get into more complex meshes, I don't like seeing my cursor kind of flip and flop around. So what I'm going to do is go up here to Preferences, Edit, and turn off Align Cursor to Surface. That doesn't change the functionality of the brush at all. All that is is just gets rid of that kind of flippy floppy nature of it. And uh, the, like I said, the brush isn't affected by that at all. So I can go in here and uh, you know sculpt as I normally would, but it's not going to have the cursor kind of going all over the place. And that's just like a preference that I have. I'm not saying you should do or shouldn't do that. If you're used to it, uh, by all means, keep it on. If you're old like me, then it's, you know, it might bug you a little bit more. So, so here we've got our weirdo face. And if you want to make him mean, you can use your move brush, a little Halloween face, or change, you know, make him sad just moving your, using your move brush. So, that's all fine and good. Again, until we get up here to this polarized end, and then it's going to be kind of nasty. Another thing that's going to be kind of nasty is when you start really modifying your object. So when I'm doing these kind of changes, they're not really stretching the polygons that much. I mean, a little bit. If you go turn on polyframe, you're going to see that you know these polygons are pretty small, but then as I make really big changes, see how they kind of grow in size? That's kind of just the nature of moving polygons around. In order to make something bigger, like if I go into my move brush and you know what, I want to put, I want to make this back of this cranium really big. So I'm going to move it way out. Let's make him like an alien or something. Um, it's going to make, oops, let's go ahead and uh, move these down a little bit. So I'm really, really changing how these polygons work here. And the more I move them out, they have to encompass the space I want them to. But in order to do that, they have to get bigger. And of course, when polygons get bigger, you're going to lose resolution. And when you lose resolution, you're going to have a kind of a bad time sculpting. Because let's say I want to sculpt another face on the back of this thing. Well, I really can't because the polygons are way too big and I have no resolution anymore. So in order to kind of control that, there's a couple different things you can do. And uh, we'll get into like remesh and z-remesh and... Um, all that kind of stuff. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. And just to kind of use this object as a piece of clay, we're going to delve into a little bit of Dynamesh. And actually, where it gets exciting, we're going to be doing Dynamesh and Clay Brush. So, where is Dynamesh at? We've got our tool menu over here. Here's the big tool menu, and here's a lot of sub menus in here. Uh, we're not into sub tools yet, actually. We're going to actually um, open that geometry menu. And it looks like I opened up a bunch of this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and close it down just by tapping on these sub sub menus here. Uh, so we've got our geometry menu here. And now let's talk a little bit about Dynamesh. The Dynamesh menu is kind of midway down, labeled thusly. And we need to use Dynamesh. And I, uh, Dynamesh, I guess, is like dynamically uh, subdivided or updated mesh topologies. I don't know what that means or what it is. But Dynamesh is what we're going to be using. So the cool thing about Dynamesh is uh, you can automatically, number one, it gives you nice even quads no matter what your object look like looks like. So again, up here where it hits Paul Polarized, you're going to get like really weird, nasty things. It's like, I can't, you know, if I try to sculpt a face up here, it's like, oh, I don't even know what that's doing. Uh, so you need nice even quads to sculpt on. Uh, that's the name of the game when it comes to Dynamesh. Um, and, you know, just general basic sculpting in general. So down here, it's pretty good. Up here, it's really bad. Back here, it's really low resolution. How do you make all of these surfaces nice and uniform to have a nice sculpting experience no matter where you are in your object or no matter how you manipulate it? That's where Dynamesh comes in. So instead of having to worry about topology like you had to in the old days, you can use Dynamesh to kind of worry about the topology for you and just sculpt away. Use this like a piece of clay. So Dynamesh, we have to turn this on. 
by turning it on is just hitting this button. Uh, so let's say you're sculpting on this object and you're like, you know what, I am tired of dealing with all this non-uniform geometry I need, go ahead and even it out for me. So we're going to convert this mesh, this PolyMesh 3D mesh, to a DynaMesh. Now if you have subdivision history, let's say you had a, you hit Control D to kind of get more resolution back here, we'll hit Control D again and again so we can actually kind of start sculpting a face back here. So basically what we did was we added a lot of, or we have added a ton of geometry to this object, so up back up here, this is like really super fine uh, geometry in here, and back here, oops, Back here, uh, it's not really super fine, you know, it's, I can't get quite that amount of detail, but it is fine enough for me to, you know, go ahead and start sculpting a weirdo kind of face back here. So, but, you know, they're disproportionate, and I still have this horrible pinching issue up here. So it kind of solved sort of this issue, but it put way too much geometry here. Uh, we need, so we need to go ahead and DynaMesh this thing. Um, we have added subdivisions here, so what DynaMesh is going to do is it's going to make this PolyMesh 3D and it's going to remake the geometry into something usable. Now by doing that, you're going to lose something and that's going to be your subdivision history. You're no longer going to be able to kind of drag down and then drag back up, just using the basic default version of DynaMesh we're going to get into just really quickly, the basics. So just keep that in mind. As I change this to a DynaMesh, you're going to lose the ability to kind of do this. Now you, there is some stuff where you can go in here and you can freeze transforms and do stuff, but we're not going to get into that yet. We're going to keep it simple. So just keep in mind that's something you're going to lose, but by losing that you're going to gain a lot of flexibility and a lot of not having to worry about resolution and topology, which I wouldn't want you to do because it's kind of a pain. We've subdivided this thing, it's kind of crappy, and we want to go ahead and even this geometry out. Again, low poly back here, high poly here, horrible pinching there, right? So let's go over here to our geometry, DynaMesh, and there's some settings in here. We've got resolution, and the ones we're going to worry about now before we get into the hard edge DynaMesh and the advanced DynaMesh stuff is resolution and project and blur. Now, by default, blur is set at 2 and project is on. Go ahead and turn those off. What we're going to basically do is use DynaMesh to kind of update our topology, and with the new algorithm and stuff, we don't really need project on to keep our detail, and we're only going to be using DynaMesh to kind of sculpt base mesh, kind of just kind of feeling it out and using it like clay. So I don't need to project a whole lot of high-res detail, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then blur, I don't want to blur it, I just wanted to DynaMesh it for me, so go ahead and turn that off. Um, those are on by default, I kind of got in the habit of just turning off blur, turning off project as I DynaMesh on any subtool or tool. Maybe you'll get in the habit as well. And you've got a resolution of 128. By default, we'll go ahead and just keep that, and we'll hit DynaMesh. So now we're turning DynaMesh on, and because I have multiple subdivision levels, it's going to ask me, do you want to freeze these subdivision levels before you enter DynaMesh mode? I'm going to hit no. I don't want to freeze them. I don't want, I don't want anything to do with these subdivision levels anymore. Get rid of them. So now we have no subdivision levels, but this is a DynaMesh now. So now when I go into polyframe mode, you're going to see what happened was, instead of that polarized end, it's just a blanket of polygons here. This area here, so here's our polygons. See how large they are? When I go back here, these polygons are the exact same size. So that's super nice. It took care of all of the trouble we were having with the original mesh, which was this side is too low res, this side is too high res, there's some pinching up here where the polarized ends. Um, these might look a little bit low still, but if you hold down shift and smooth, you're going to see they're actually as high poly, so we can go ahead and start sculpting in here, add a little recessed nose, maybe a little mouth back here, just to, you can kind of see what's going on back there. Go to this side, and you're going to see the, the mesh on this side behaves the exact same way as the other side. So that's really nice. As well as, if you go to the top here, and you hold down shift to smooth, and you try and sculpt over this, like, oh, it's going to pinch. No, it's not going to pinch because it redid all of this geometry up here to make it nice for sculpting, which is basically when you're in ZBrush, that's kind of important, right? You want to make your meshes nice for sculpting, and DynaMesh will kind of do that for you. Now, that's not to say you can't go crazy on this mesh anymore uh, and kind of make the geometry go nuts. So let's say I want to pull this guy's head out a lot. Um, let's go ahead and use the move brush and kind of pull those out. And if we go back into polyframe mode, which again, the hotkey for that is shift F, or you can just touch this button over here. Let's pull that out and let's go pull out to the side here. I'm, I mean, again, I'm just making some really nasty geometry here. So see all this nasty geometry we're getting and we hold down shift to smooth and we try and sculpt on it. I'm not getting much out of this, right? Let's undo that. So I need to 
re-Dynamesh this object. Well, Dynamesh is cool enough to know that uh, if you're working in Dynamesh mode, probably you're going to be Dynameshing as you go and making major changes. So all I need to do is control drag out here in the document here, and that's going to re-Dynamesh my object for me. So if I go over here to the polyframe again, you're going to see it remade all that nasty geometry into just a nice blanket of quads. So now what I can do is go ahead and smooth this down, and I can go in here and I can hold down alt and kind of sculpt this in, sculpt this out if I want to, smooth it, and it's all really nice to work on. Make these into like some, I don't know, airplane engine hovercraft thing. <laughs> whatever, whatever this weirdo thing is. So you can continually add and move stuff around and not only that, you can actually, if I want to, um, this might be skipping ahead a little bit. I'm gonna go into move brush here and I'm gonna kind of move move this down and around and as I move this thing down I'm going to control drag to kind of re-dynamesh and I'm going to move this around I'm going to control drag to re-dynamesh I'm just going to push this right into the object here now when I've overlapped these two polygons here if I control drag it's going to dynamesh those objects together and make them all one solid mesh so you can use that to your advantage as well if you were you know, making handles or something and I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit and use the inflate brush to kind of inflate these out and then shift the drag and then go back to my standard brush here. So we'll get to in the inflate brush. Or if you want to, you know what? Inflate brush is easy. Let's do that. So go B, I, that's your, that narrows it down to the I brushes and then inflate is in. So now with the inflate brush selected, it'll just actually, remember those surface normals I was talking about where all these polygons are pointing out in a direction from their face? Inflate will just inflate along those normals to kind of push it out like a tube. This is just like you're blowing air into a, a balloon. So you can kind of inflate those. And uh, we haven't gotten into masking yet, but you know, you can use, you can move stuff around and you can make loops and it'll enclose itself and it's really, really, and it's, you're just like you're working in clay. So you can do all the crazy stuff you want and then all you have to do is control drag out here in the document to re-Dynamesh. So if you've made any really crazy changes here, Let's go ahead and pull this out. And you know what's another cool one to talk about? Let's talk about snake hook. So instead of the move brush, so what, when I use the move brush, it's kind of like a big, um, it's a very f soft fall off. And when I move it out, you kind of just moves in one direction. Um, I've got snake hook down here, but if you go to B, S, H over here to uh, grab the snake hook brush, this is kind of like the move brush, but it behaves a little bit differently. So if you click and drag around, it'll actually follow the brush that you're using. So you can actually use Snake Hook Brush to kind of pull and drag out and kind of get some really interesting shapes here. Same thing for the side over here. So it's kind of, I mean, some people actually like prefer to use the Move Brush instead of Snake Hook. So you can certainly use that to your advantage here. But we're also getting this really nasty geometry. It's okay. Control drag out here. That'll give you new geometry and kind of smooth these nasty areas down a little bit. And you're good to go. So you've made a lot of really cool shapes in here. Oops, it's quick saved on me, so it kind of made that disappear. So you can kind of go in here and start refining these shapes around and uh, doing that kind of stuff.